Welcome to the channel. So in this video, I'm going to be doing a long-term review of the K1. I've had mine for several months now, and I'll just go ahead and tell you, I, I love this printer. I love, love, love it. It has a couple of little quirks to it, and that's really what I wanted to cover. You know, there's a ton of you know, base review videos out there. Um, so, you know, this isn't one of those. This is more a long-term. I've been printing with mine for, you know, again, several months now, and I just wanted to point out, uh, you know, the issues that I see, um, or things that I've had to deal with with my K1. Anyway, if you like this kind of content, please like and subscribe, and let's go ahead and get on with the extended review. Okay, so let's talk about the extruder first, because that seems to be the question everybody comes up with. Um, when these things first came out, they had all kinds of problems with their extruder, and Creality changed it, you know, to alleviate that problem. And they've changed it at this point like five or six times. I have a version two, as far as I could tell, and it was right after the original, and I've had zero problems with it. So if you get one like this, just use it, you know, until you have a problem, and then Creality will replace it. Okay, let's talk about the camera real quick. You have to use their the Creality Cloud app if you want to download your time lapses. Keep that in mind. If you don't want to use the Cloud app, you're not going to be able to use time lapses, so there's really no need for the camera. Now, for the hot end, there were a couple of revisions of this. You know, there's one with a red sock. Um, there's a new upgraded one and all that. I have had zero problems with my original hot end, so if you get an original, don't worry about it, just like the extruder. Just use it. Okay, let's talk about lubrication. So for X, this rod here, and the one beneath it, this one here, those do not need lubrication. The manual says to lube them, but you don't because they're on carbon infused bearings. They're self-lubricating. This Y and this Y rod, plus the Z rod, which is all the way in the back behind this screw, those need lubrication. Let me see if I can get a better view of the, the rod back here. It's hard to see, but it is back there. Those all need lubrication, but your X does not. Okay, so let's talk about the PEI sheet. Now, it tells you that you have to use glue on here. I haven't used glue at all on this ever. Um, for PLA, it's just fine printing straight on it. Now, they tell you to use glue for PLA on here because the leveling kind of sucks. Um, you know, my first layers are, are kind of horrible and using the glue will, you know, help it stick better. That's, that's really the thing, but you don't have to, you know, you can use it for PLA just fine the way it is. Okay. So let's talk about two things that I had to do as soon as I got this basically. Now my belts, um, needed to be redone. They needed a, their tension reset. Uh, it's really easy to do. There's little screws back here. Uh, and my bed, it was way off. Uh, the back was higher than the front. Uh, and again, the, uh, Creality has some great videos for you to watch on both of these subjects uh, that tell you how to go through the process of retensioning your belts and redoing your bed level. I had to do both. Okay, so my biggest peeve with this machine is this runout sensor right here. Now here's my filament and it runs up through here, up through a reverse bowden and into the system. I have to basically pull this bowden tube off every time I want to put filament in because it jams. I, I just can't get it to go straight up through it. It's horrible. Okay, so here's the other thing I did was, you know, they put the spool holder on the back of the printer and I'm just not a fan of that. So I just got some free rollers that I printed and I just put it on the side works so much easier. It's so much easier to change. Um, and you know, some people you'll print one for the side. There's a lot for the side, but I like it just like this. Okay. So let's talk about the print quality that you can expect here. Now I have not rooted my machine. I wanted to use it like everybody else would. Um, I will root it. I'll probably do a video on that, but I just wanted to, you know, to, go through it for a couple of months. Like, you know, everybody else is going to use it. Like you're going to use the people that are watching this video. Now this is silk. Um, you know, it turned out fantastic. 
Um, here's some regular PLA, little CR cube. Again, I mean, it's great print quality. You know, there's a little bit right here, but that's again probably the filament, not the printer. Now, one problem I do have, and I mentioned this a little earlier, is with first layers. And first layers just, they're not fantastic. You know, you don't get really good squish all over the board. Um, and they don't really give you a way to adjust it, not in the printer, you know, because it's auto calibration for Z offset. I mean, here's, you know, I use this cube as my uh, level test, you know, or things sticking. And as you can see, you know, it just has that one little square that holds it onto the bed, and that worked fine. Now here's a, a Voron cube that I printed with Hyper PLA. The Hyper PLA is fantastic on here. It, it works extremely well, um, as you can see with this cube. Now I did this Benchy uh, in regular, this is Ender PLA, it's Creality PLA, uh, just white. And I used it uh, for their high speed Benchy you know, they call, they tell you to use Hyper PLA for that, but I wanted to test this. And as you can see, it, it came out pretty good. It's got a couple of little flaws to it, but I printed this thing, I think in like 13 minutes or 17 minutes, I forget whatever the time is, but it's super fast uh, for a Benchy. Super, super fast for a Benchy. And I think it, you know, it turned out great. So you can use regular PLA. You don't have to use Hyper PLA. Now, silks um, are a sore spot with, well, at least with my machine, I have to print them slow, you know, um, or not as fast. Anything over 100 millimeters per second, it, it just stops printing. Um, it does not work well. Uh, I'm not 100% sure why. Now this is a 72 millimeter figurine that I wanted to print out, you know, so I could see how the details are gonna work and supports and things like that. And as you can see, he turned out great. A um, couple of little flaws. I mean, it's an FDM printer. It's not a resin printer. Um, so he has a couple of flaws on it. But all in all, he looks really, really good. Um, all things considered. So, I mean, it's a fantastic printer. Here's a little utility box you know, for um, your USB cables that are printed. Printed all one piece. Zero problems. Works just great. Now, here's a piece I did for um, Silk. You know, again, uh, Silk has some issues, and I'll talk more about this guy uh, in a minute. But again, you just got to print it slower. That's that's really the only problem. It prints them just fine. You just have to do it slower. Now, talking about speed, I printed this guy at 300 millimeters per second, and it is fantastic. Um, it's a fantastic bust of uh, Deadpool, and it was quick. You know, and that's why you want this printer, because it's quick. You know, no more waiting 15 hours for things to print. Now, silks, <laughs> not so much, but regular PLA is no problem. No problem whatsoever. Um, as you can see here, uh, it does a fantastic job. So, I mean, again, I love the printer. It just, it's got a couple of quirks. Okay, so let's talk about this guy here. Now, you know, like I said before, um, with silks, I have to slow them down. And you can see on the sides here, you have VFA or these artifacts that show up um, whenever you print things slower on this machine. So pretty much all your silks, well, at least on my machine, are gonna show this. Keep that in mind. Okay, so I only had this happen once but you can see here are two things that are identical. Uh, they're the same uh, G-code. One of them is shorter than the other. And the printer said that both were done. Um, I'm not sure exactly what happened, but uh, you can see that I'm missing a couple of layers on this one right here. It's hard to see it um, holding them up, but when I screw this on, it should be level with that line. And it's not, you can see there's the gap. Now the printer thought it was done. It said it was done, you know, at the end, but it wasn't. And again, I've only seen this once, but I figured I would mention it. It's very weird, very, very weird. 
Okay, so this is going to be the last touch point I have here. Now, I don't know if people are even aware of this, but if you point a web browser on your local network to the IP of the printer, you will get this interface. And it's like a toned down version of Fluid. That, that's what it kind of looks like to me. Now, in this interface, you can do all of your basic functionality. You know, I can see what's printing. If you have the camera, you know, you can watch the actual printer do its thing. Um, you can control, you know, the geometry, you can move it up and down, move your bed up and down, move the head all around, do all that, set temperatures, turn fans on and off. Um, all of that basic functionality is in here, which is really nice. Um, and again, I'm not even sure if people are aware that they can do this. Um, Creality Print, you know, you can see it's got the label up here. This isn't the actual slicer. This is just the... Uh, the web interface and here you got a file listing and over here you can see all of the temperatures for your hot end and for your bed and further down you actually have a visualizer for your bed level um, again it's all really nice uh, it, it would be nicer if you had more functionality in here like a console or things like that that you would normally see in a clipper front end like a, a fluid or mainsail but what you get, I mean, actually works pretty good. I, I use it all the time. This is really how I send things because I don't use Creality Print anymore. I, I, again, like I said, I tried to use this thing like a normal person would. And I use Creality Print exclusively, you know, for several uh, weeks uh, just to get the feel for it. And then I moved over to Prusa Slicer because um, I just, I like it better. But... You know, again, it's a good printer. Um, if you can get it for under $400, I would definitely pick one up. Um, really, the only problems I've had are my bed leveling, and that just started with the newest version of firmware. So it's kind of interesting. With When I first got the printer, they upgraded to 1328, I believe. And in that version, pressure advanced didn't work at all, but I had really good first layers. Well, better first layers. I wouldn't say really good, but you know, better than what I have now. Now it's horrible. And then they upgraded to 13220, I believe is the current version, or at least at time of creating this video. And in it, um, they fixed the pressure advance. So pressure advance actually works now, but my bed leveling is worse. You know, my first layers are way worse than they were. <clears throat> and you can get around the first layers by going into your uh, software, your slicer and setting a Z offset and that's what I've ended up doing I had to set a Z offset of like 0 0.05 I think or 0 0.15 and and that fixed the problem but you shouldn't have to do things like that you know and I haven't rooted the machine because I wanted to use it like everyone else but um, I will be doing a video soon of going through the rooting process and getting things up to date and all that because um, that's the next step for this because I think once it's rooted all of the problems that I've seen are going to go away because then I have full control over the printer and it's not as, you know, toned down because Creality is taking a lot of things away from you that, you know, you can normally do inside a clipper. Anyway, great printer. I really, really enjoy it. Um, so I would definitely, you know, I would get one, uh, if, especially if you can find it for under $400. So if you like this content, please like and subscribe. Um, if nothing else, just hit that like button because it really helps me out as it directs people to my videos. But as always, happy printing.